Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here today to provide uh, an American voice in this important discussion um, on a very important topic. Let me start by stating the obvious. To keep building our prosperity, we have to keep growing our economies. And to do that, we have to continue to open and expand markets. Removing barriers to trade and investment is good for our economies, and for our citizens, the people who live in them. Globalization is a fact of life. You can't choose to opt out of the global system. And we can't ignore the realities of the new economy. We can't stop the global economy at our shores. Instead, we've got to harness it on our own terms. Europe and the United States both have shared opportunities and shared threats, as the tragic events in Paris at the end of last week demonstrate. So it makes all the more sense to stand together. TTIP provides a real opportunity for shared high standards in terms of safety, consumer quality, environment, coming from different places but we're, we're coming from different places, but we would be arriving at the same destination. And by doing this, we help shape the global economy by setting high standards that would be applied across the world. If we don't seize the opportunity in this agreement to shape world trade, to set the rules of the road, then others will do it instead and do it in a very different way. And behind the economics, there is also a strong strategic argument. As my boss, uh, Secretary Kerry, said, remember that in our era, economic and security issues overlap. You can't lead in one and lag on the other. So we have a shared vision for open, integrated economies and the rule of law. Our economic relationship also bolsters our strategic partnership. By building a stronger partnership and breaking down barriers, we will modernize our alliance and make it more secure and more integrated. We will, in turn, enhance our strategic influence. The United States has focused on the Trans-Pacific Partnership, as been, has, has been stated, and the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership is close behind. And we are working very hard to carry our domestic stakeholders and Congress and the public in the United States behind us. As has been mentioned, uh, TPP has already been concluded, um, and we are very hopeful that this will proceed through the Congress. At the same time, we do not intend to uh, let up on TTIP, and we'll focus our efforts and redouble our efforts on, on negotiating that agreement. Here in Europe, I think we all need to do a better job of addressing the myths that surround these trade deals, uh, educating the public, our member states, uh, highlighting the benefits of an agreement and debunking some of the myths um, that have been promulgated in the, in the press. We appreciate the very forward-leaning role that the United Kingdom plays on trade issues in the European Union, and we hope that this group, ECR, will continue to push the EU to expand trade with new markets, including our own. As has been mentioned uh, earlier, it's not we're really not talking about major market openings. I mean, the trade and investment between the European Union and the United States is already enormous. But it is making different, a difference on the margins. It's in breaking down regulatory barriers and other non-tariff trade barriers that really a, a small bit will give us a large benefit. If we are able to do this, I believe we can be collectively stronger in the face of economic challenges, and at the end of the day, make the world more prosperous, 
uh, more just and more safe, which is what our citizens are asking of us. Thank you.